All right, we're going to go over the petrodollar and basically what it means to us as Americans and why we care. All right, so back in 1971, we went off the gold standard. Everyone knows that story with Nixon. Uh, shortly after that, we realized that uh, we're not going to be doing so well as far as global financials unless we can back our dollar with something. So we saw an opportunity in 1974 to go over to the Middle East, and we said to them, hey, you guys have a lot of oil, and we want reserve currency status. So let's make an agreement. We will provide you security in the form of the military. You will be safe. No one will mess with the United States military as long as we're backing you and we're providing you security. And in exchange for that, what you're going to have to do is you have to sell your oil in dollars. And they said, well, how are we going to sell oil in dollars? And he said, well, we have these amazing treasuries that you can buy and that other countries can buy for uh, oil. And they said, well, we're tired of getting uh, shot at. Uh, we've got lots of oil. We have no um, enforcement military to speak of that can hold off giant countries that could come over and take, take over us. Deal. So, hence was born the petrodollar. So since then, other countries have been purchasing oil in dollars, in U.S. dollars, in the form of treasuries. They have been uh, trading in that for uh, decades. In around 2010, Iran decided, you know what, we're not going to buy uh, oil in dollars anymore. Countries have been and dropping out of this petrodollar system. Why does that affect us and why do we care? Well, the more countries that decide not to purchase oil in dollars in the form of treasuries, the weaker the dollar gets. Imagine yourself as a Chinese businessman who has tens of billions of US dollars, and those dollars are rapidly um, not being used in countries around the world. They're starting to fall off, right? As we withdrew from the Middle East and we no longer started providing, and we were no longer providing security for the Middle East, they don't have any incentive to sell these things in dollars. And they start saying, well, China, um, you don't have to buy oil in dollars anymore. We'll take your yuan. Russia, you don't have to buy these in dollars anymore. We'll take rubles or gold. So what are you going to do as a Chinese businessman or a Russian businessman or fill in the blank if you have all these dollars, but you don't have to spend them on oil anymore, you can spend them on whatever you want. If I were them, I would start buying U.S. assets with those dollars because that is a country where you can spend it, right? If you got $10 billion as a rich Chinese businessman and you have apartment buildings in the United States, you can bring those dollars back here to the United States, purchase apartment complexes, and start creating cash flow. You can do the same thing if you're a rich businessman in another country that has a lot of USD, a lot of US dollars, you can start purchasing real things with them instead of having a currency that is rapidly declining. So you might as well exchange them for something instead of nothing, right? When that happens, I talked about the Euro dollar, that about half of all the dollars in existence are outside of the United States, right? When those dollars come back into the United States, because this is the only country that will accept them, inflation will be monumental and something like you've never seen before. Here is a small example of that. This is a bunch of currency that I've gotten over the years from different countries. You know, pull money out of, pull currency out of the ATM of the country so that I can use it to buy stuff. And before I leave, I still have a little bit left. I've got some here from Honduras. It's got Asian writing on it. So it's probably Thailand, Laos, or China, uh, Brazil. I've got uh, Guatemala, Nicaragua. I'm going to Nicaragua here in a few months, so I'll be able to use that. But I took this to my bank and I said, hey, can I exchange this for USD? And they looked at me like I had two heads. They're like, no. <laughs> so this is essentially worthless paper. Imagine if I had been in that country and before I left, I went to a coin shop and I bought some gold coins or silver coins with it. 
Now I would have something that is exchangeable anywhere on the planet. I didn't do that. Now I've got worthless paper, except for Nicaragua, where I'm actually going to be able to take this and use it. My point is, imagine yourself in that rich uh, Russian businessman that has a bunch of these, but it's USD, and maybe not necessarily in the form of paper, but in the form of, of US treasuries. What is he going to do? I think he's going to do what I should have done with this and go buy real stuff with it, right? Even if I had walked away from there with a pack of gum or a backpack or something, that would be more valuable than this worthless paper. I hope you guys got something out of this. Please like and subscribe, and I will talk to you next time.